Hey everybody, let's take a closer look at the preset object. The preset object is an incredibly useful way of saving the state of your Max Patcher because Max doesn't save very much information by default. When you close your patch and reopen it, most of your values are reset to zero or to defaults. And that's fine, that's expected behavior for Max. Until we add a preset object, Max doesn't know that we want to save this information and doesn't know what information we want to save. But the preset object, when it's just created in a patch, will by default save every user interface object except for buttons and message boxes. So it can sometimes save too much information and we want to be able to either specifically include the information that we want to save or exclude certain pieces of information we don't want to save. So let's take a look at that. Let's build a little patch to get us started. With a couple of images going to a jit.gl.layer, scale, position, rotate XYZ. And note that if you want to rotate your layer, use rotate XYZ, don't use rotate. Rotate is a four value list that is not human readable. Rotate XYZ is the kind of rotation values that you'd expect and that are easier for you to interact with. We'll duplicate this and add some different images. And we'll create a jit.world. Give it some name, my world. As always, this is an arbitrary name, an arbitrary symbol. That's why I put it in all caps. You can call this anything you want to. We'll give it the floating attribute and set it to one so our window floats. Add a toggle to turn our world on. We can command J to fix the width of this object. And we can see that we have this image on layer zero. We can move this layer on top of it. So now we're seeing layer one we move layer one to the side, we see layer zero below it. That's our expected behavior. For jit.gl.layer, we'll add some sound as well to this patch. Very simple playlist tilde with four sounds here in the left playlist. They have their live gain, five sounds here in the right playlist, which also have a gain We've got our interp value or our fade time value, and we can play these sounds either from the play buttons or from the message boxes or by typing a number into the number box. And also when a number box is selected, you can use the arrow keys to scroll through the numbers. So I'm on three. If I hit the down arrow, it's gonna play sound number two. If I select the number box, I can hit the arrow keys again, select sound number one, etc. Over here, I've got a random connected to these five sounds. So that I can randomly choose between them. So if I add a preset to this patch, what gets saved? That's an interesting thing to always consider when we add a preset to a patch. So I'll add my preset object here. And as always with the preset, it's a good idea to make your slot size, your bubble size larger, so these squares are a little easier to interact with. And to save a preset, we shift click. So I hold down shift, and click one, what has been saved? These four atrui have been saved. I'll mark them in green just to show that they've been saved. These four atrui have also been saved. Mark them in green. These two number boxes have been saved. And both of my live.gains have been saved and my Atrui here has been saved. So note the things that have not been saved. The buttons and the message boxes have not been saved. 
So there's no way to access those directly by recalling a preset. But what's interesting here is because there's a one in this number box and because there's a three in this number box, when I recall preset one, these values will be recalled playing sounds one and three simultaneously. Watch. Now, I may not want that behavior. I might have wanted these simply as display objects, in which case I would want to either remove them, and I can shift, click, and drag to pull them out of their patch cords. And now I will not get that behavior. When I recall the preset, these number boxes are still being recalled, but they're not triggering a sound because they're no longer connected to the playlist tilde. Or if I want to leave them where they are, I can exclude them from the preset using the middle outlet. I connect the middle outlet to the objects that I want not to be recorded by the preset. And then when I re-record one, these two number boxes have been excluded from the preset, and so the sounds will no longer play, even though all these other settings will be recalled. So let's set up two scenarios here with our images. I'll save this as preset number one, and this as preset number two. And I can switch between these two because all of these settings have been saved into the preset. However, if I wanted to be able to have different positions saved for each of these, I can use a different feature of the preset, which is the leftmost outlet, the include connection. And I can say this preset only applies to those for Atrui, and this preset only applies to this set of Atrui. So now when I recall the preset, I can resave it here and resave it here. I can recall the second preset, resave it here and resave it here. And now this preset is only controlling that layer, the layer that it's connected to. And this preset is only controlling this layer. So this is the way in which you can get individual control of things by using multiple preset objects. And I can make yet another preset and use the include connection to save the volumes of these two sounds. Fade out my right sound, save it as one, fade out my left sound, and fade in my right sound, and save it as two. And now I can switch between the two sounds. So if I play both of these sounds, <laughs> My preset becomes a crossfader. And if I also include the interp in my preset, I can also save a fade time here. Recall my preset and resave it with the interp included. Recall my right preset and resave it with the interp included. So now I have a crossfader between my sounds. two-second crossfade. So note that how powerful this include connection is, the left connection. I'm deciding exactly what I want saved in each preset. And then if I want to trigger all these presets at the same time, I can do so with a single message. This will recall preset one on all three presets. And this will recall preset two on all three presets. Of course, the easier way to do this is put a number box here. And that's gonna cut down on my number of patch cables quite a bit. Preset one, preset two, on three separate presets. And now I don't have to worry about this number box, this number box, and this number box because they're not explicitly included in any of the three presets, they're not stored. 
So using preset with the exclude connection and with the include connection will really help you refine exactly what elements of your patch that you're saving. Now because buttons and message boxes are not saved in presets and we are no longer saving these two number boxes in the preset, we need another method if we want to, for instance, switch between images or turn on and off sounds. And a simple way to do that is with the select object. We can simply say, I want this image to be displayed when I recall preset one, and this image to be displayed when I recall preset two. And we can either take this right from this number box here, or we can also use the second outlet of the preset, which is the preset number when it's recalled. So when I recall preset one, a one will be sent. When I recall preset two, a two will be sent. I can pass this into the select and switch between the images as the presets are recalled. And if I have additional presets that I've saved, I could say preset three and preset four, I can expand my select here. To trigger whichever image I want when the preset is recalled. Preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four. And of course, at the moment, presets two and four are identical, but we can differentiate them. Now preset four is rotated. So preset one, preset two, preset three, different image, preset four, different image rotated. This principle is the same for sounds. So if I want preset one to play sound one, preset two to play sound two, I can simply connect the second outlet of the preset to this number box. And when I recall preset one, sound one plays. When I recall preset two, sound two plays and fades out. And in this particular case, that's not a behavior that we would want because we would presumably want to trigger a different sound in the right and fade to it. So we can remove this structure here and put in a select here as well. So that when preset one is recalled, sound one plays. And when preset two is recalled, it will fade to the right sound and play a random sound.